Hey there, and welcome back to Trainwreck, an educational monster train series where you watch me struggle at around 200 pack shards. Let's see, I, I think I'm wrapping up my recording session for the day after this particular episode. I'm not quite done, but my voice is getting a little hoarse, and by the time I finish this episode, you're going to have a hard time hearing me. So I figured, you know what, let's take it a little easy. I am pretty excited. I've had some pretty good runs this week, so I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. I've I've been enjoying some Monster Train. It feels nice just having some solid runs. So, yeah, not much really to add there. Uh, it's, it's nice. You know, I, I like recording this series, and not just this series, but this channel. This is kind of a... Maybe I didn't really intend for this to be the intro, but I really enjoy playing Monster Train. I think it's a nice game to play. I'm having a lot of fun with this, and it... At the current cadence, like five runs a week or something like that, it's like a fun little diversion on my Saturdays to just be like, hey, let's play some Monster Train and record it for folks. And you all get to enjoy it and I get to have fun. And honestly, it's a nice little fun little side thing. So I'm a big fan. So yeah, I'll just leave it at like, thanks for being here, I suppose. Thanks for giving me a reason to continue recording the channel. That's it's always nice, but Anyway, on that note, let's play some stuff. Our previous run, which brought us up to 39 wins on the series. Let me fix my notes because I was almost wrong about that. Uh, 39 wins on the series was a Rector run. It was interesting because it was, it was basically Big Sludge. I had this weird harvest start that just kind of looked bad. And then the game showed me Sludge and some multi strikes. And I said, OK, well, I'm going to put wickless tycoon in there and make a whole bunch of money and then my deck was so small by the end of the run we were just crushing it a, a very dominant position i think the best runs are the runs where you have a direction and you can snowball hard on the removals to make your consistency so high this is something that i find newer players struggle with right they just have so much stuff in their decks and they're they're spending their money to improve their decks but they're not removing enough cards when you get down to like the 19 card range with six card draw and half of those cards go away because they're units or consume cards, by the time you're redrawing, you're like seeing all of your good upgraded things every single turn. And those are those are good. Like that's a lot of strength to be just like flinging out there. We had some real dominant dripfall. A dripfall start specifically with an iron drop cage pickup, just a really killer survivability line and a light's gift in there to make sure my units wouldn't die. So just strong overall. We're now moving on to, oh uh, yes, the start of my favorite champions. Actually, Rector is the start of my favorite champions. I feel very confident playing Rector. Uh, yeah, I, think, I actually think he's one of my most consistent champions. I Side note. I actually feel that once I got to the point where I felt I had a mastery over Rector, that's when my win streak actually started happening. It was Rector who had been holding me up for a long time, and so I just grinded his uh, grinded his clan combos and just figured it out. And it was just like 60 runs straight of Dark Calling or something nuts. And once I was like, oh, I get it, then it became... That was when I actually started my, my win streak. Where is my win streak? I mean, like, this is not even real right now. I mean, the 100 is real. This is a 100 win streak with no resets, which is, and rotating, so it's rotating champions random secondary, which I'm very proud of. Honestly, if I weren't so, like, if I wasn't so concerned about the stress of recording on my series, like, I, I've won so many runs on on the regular run series, you know, the train of thought that I, that number would be like 200 right now. But the truth is that I'm not I'm not trying to be competitive about it. I'm trying to be educational and I'm trying to have a good time here. So I don't know. I don't want to lose my train of thought series. I think that's cool. But at the same time, I don't feel like I need to make that number any bigger. Right. It doesn't make me feel good to look at that and go, haha, 103 or something. I don't know. So it's kind of just it is what it is. Uh, I turn on that mod that does nothing functionally just to disable win streaks, which is fine. Anyway, that's enough chitter chatter. Let's go play some Spine Chief. This guy's sick. I'm looking forward to this episode. Let's do it. Uh, as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And hashtag send it. Let's go.
I would like Decayer, please. Oh my god, they gave me Awoken? Give me Decayer, you cowards. Default Awoken. I love it. Ooh, I hope you're all doing well today because I'm about to have a good one. We have Stings and Bounding Echoes in our opener. I'm ready to go. We're fighting Pushback Talos, whatever. Curse Arcus, eh. Patient Seraph. Okay, a little scary. I'm looking for an answer for that. It's a 200 shard run. We have Bounding Echo, Sting, and Power of Knowledge. These are great cards. Bounding Echoes will enable us to convert other cards that aren't purple into purple cards, and Sting accelerates us through our decks, and if it hits, uh, through our deck, singular, I only have one of them, and if the Bounding Echoes connects with a Sting, it becomes a free infuse trigger. So this is, this is nuts if I hit Decayer. And then Power of Knowledge is a ping that at least does 30 damage thanks to Bounding Echoes, so we take these. Cool, awesome, let's go. All right, let's think a bit about the node generation here. 200 shard run, reminder to self. We have temples on two, three, four, seven, and eight. Okay, so five temples, great node generation. I was a little bit worried seeing the initial three because you could have gotten got there, but we didn't. We saw five, which is excellent. We have a dupe on magic side on eight, otherwise unremarkable. A good steel shop on seven with a vortex and money. It's okay. Uh, it's not as amazing as it could be, but it's at least something. We're looking for, it's going to depend a lot on what we see for Chief as far as what we're looking for. But this clan combo is really good because Corruptor has Sweepers and Animus of Will, whereas Decayer has Tanks and Restores. So just really solid all around. Good Magic Shop on 6 with Vortex. I'll take it. There is a reasonably good Trinket Shop there as well. You have a Horde in the middle with Boons. I like Money Trinket Shops a lot. I've, I've learned that I find those quite valuable overall. We have a steel shop in the middle of nowhere squared with rank five, competing with a really good dupe with a horde and caverns. That's almost certainly what I'm doing. We have a removal dupe on pyre remains with four, competing with a wormkin banner steel shop. I do like wormkin banners a lot with chief, especially if I get decayer. As far as the early game, we have our pick of banners, it looks like. Double magics, the steel shop has a woken banner and the second magic shop has a woken banner. So a lot of good combos there. This would be a good corruptor run, but I do think that decayer is a kind of more what I feel like playing. I feel like you can reasonably win either way. As long as we, we always see one of them, so we're gonna be fine. Let's take the horde. Well, hardened hull would enable a, some sick egg nonsense here. Do I perspective that hardened hull? Wow, do I perspective the hardened hull? Think about it like this. What if I'm shown corruptor here? If it's corruptor, I have to take it, of course. Fine. So we take the corruptor. Now. The sweepers and the animus are all solid, but I have to protect the floor. But I could easily go endless egg off of a, a hardened hull opener if I see an egg. But that the nice thing about that is it opens up two more banner units on Wormkin that are killer strong. I'm going to perspective hardened hull here. I think that we're going to be strong enough to not have to worry about this early on. And... As much as I really love free card draw here, I think the Winged Steel is good. Like, really good, by the way. Like, that's a really strong card, especially later in the game. This is, I mean, card. It's a relic. But later in the game, this does huge value. But the Prospective Hardened Hull is a very good hedge pick here that I think opens up a lot of options. You could see the Double Awoken banners here and go, hey, probably not seeing an egg, right? But... You don't know, right? I might see one from that decent ring four steel shop that I'm probably going to. I doubt I'm gonna be ready for a removal dupe by then with only one steel shop. And I could see a unit draft. This thing turns something like, say, Kinhost Vessel into a baller opener. And I could even Endless Egg pretty confidently with Hardened Hull on Kinhost Vessel. I'm going to take this. This just makes too many units good for me to skip. I'll take the cash. 
I get Decayer. Okay, this is fine. I think Decayer is... It's tough. I think Decayer Corruptor are such good paths that it's hard to argue with whatever they are. It's, it's hard to lose, right, with them. I think you could pick either one here and very confidently and dominantly win the floor. Like, win the run. I don't have to really comment on a whole heck of a lot here. Unfortunately, I do miss the collector, sadly. You hate to see it. But, eh, fair enough. Goodbye, collector. It's a shame. We are going to do Bounding Echoes upstairs so I can drop the train steward in, which is good. I want to do Double Fractures middle here to kill the back lines. Good. Sure. I want to do a Restore up top. I'm going to do a double hit upstairs. I don't get this kill, but it's going to be okay. So I take five. As long as I see... Yeah, anything that does damage here, which we do. I need to respect... Oh man, that's that's impressive. I need to respect the, the damage in the back there, I think. It's the only way I can really say it. Yeah, yeah, I have to respect it. Cool, we sting here. We just do regen, regen. I think I swing take this because I take three, but I don't leak the six. Yeah, I had to quickly run the math on that. I was like, I think this math's out, right? And it does. So, yeah, it's fine. Just barely, but we take it. Eight damage, not a big deal. Echo transfer, it's purple, so it's not that costly. It's good. I mean, it's better than the alternatives here, so I'll take it. Mm, I mean, Purple Vine Grasp, it is a ping. I'll grab that. I don't necessarily need them, but I want something that's better than a Restore to put magic power into and better than a Sting. And the fact that it's purple is something, so I'll grab it. Sure. Okay, that was money. I'm really tempted to go Magic Shop here, especially with this hull. I'm going to go Magic Shop. There's a lot of stuff I can do here. They showed me a holdover on Echo Transfer. I also feel pretty good on that, honestly. Yeah, we'll go right. Look at that Wormkin banner. Ooh, baby, holdover on the spot. Love to see it. <laughs> Glug Cider, no. No, Glug Cider, you can't. Ugh, come on. You're the worst unit in the game. Yeah, he's not the worst unit in the game, but he's pretty bad. He's, he's really bad. Wow, okay. Well, I guess I'm going to take first of kin so I don't die. I have five... Wow, I actually I have holdover spell chain on this echo transfer. Man, that's sick. That's really sick, actually. I'm gonna do it. I know that this obviously costs me echoes, but it's not that much. And it's quite good. I have I can backload my shards a lot here, so let's minus one a restore here. Yes. What's coming up? No steel shop? I'm okay with that. So we'll do minus one on a fracture, actually. This card is just way way too good to skip. I'm going to 20 consume one of the restores, so I have a good heal card. And I'm going to take some more minus ones here. I think that these provide enough value for me to not really worry about it. Woken Banner, maybe? I don't want this other 20 consume. I'm going to save my 30 gold here. We're going to go in at 25. I think we're okay for this. We have this ridiculous thing. I am going to snap click that unit draft. I do feel confident enough in getting through this. Cool. It's going to be first of kin upstairs, I think. And then I'm going to put chief middle. Reasons are I can't play any of these things downstairs. So playing them downstairs is not wise. And this also means I should be able to get the Collector here, which is nice. Nice. We're going to sack him. I'm okay with it. I could hold on to the Echo Transfer here, but I really don't think I want to. I just kill this whole floor here, I think, is the right choice. It's a lot of incoming damage, but I think it's worth it. Yeah, I'm going to give him a big restore. Big fan. I'm going to do some reap action here. We're going to do some vine grasping. Good stuff. Just drop a train steward downstairs. Good. 
floors are cleared. I will bounding echoes upstairs for the scaling at least. I want to stop the five damage in the back, work on the boss, and then toss down a steward here. Okay. Bounding echoes upstairs. We are gonna load this floor up to the best of our ability. It's worth it. Yeah, that's like 122 damage. Cool. We're gonna easily crunch this. I'm not scared at all. Yeah, look at that, easy mode. Burst of Kin just kind of hard carries the final stage of this. Saves me, like, it's like taking that unit saves me something like 28 HP, which is a lot, so. I want Echo Infusion. It's not purple, but I do want this. I will take this. I have Bounding Echoes, it's fine. Purple Steel Enhancer is, it's okay. It's fine, it's purple, right? What could go wrong? I'm gonna click the purple. No egg, no egg, oh no. I am gonna take this Keeper of Echoes though, right? <laughs> Thorn Hollow though, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know what's actually a pretty sick run? Thorn Hollow Relentless Strats with Spine Chief. Does that work at 200 shards? I know it works at 100. You just take space from ring three. You stick Thorn Hollow there. You just play him on the same floor as Chief in front, and you just send it with a lot of like scaling. Things will kill themselves. He protects himself, and you cruise. It's actually not that bad, right? <laughs> Do I want to take Thorn Hollow here? Keeper's pretty darn good, admittedly. I'll take the Thorn Hollow. I think he's much stronger in Talos, that's for sure. What a wild looking floor. I've got two ginormous dudes. If I go Awoken, Hall, Awoken Banner, what could they show me? Some more minus ones would be strong, admittedly. There is money with the Merchant of Steel. It's an option. I'm gonna go left. I do think it's better than the Horde angle. Minus ones, some stack stone action. Okay, so we find the Animus of Will Shattered Shell. These are what you want if you have Corruptor here, but not important. We don't take these. These are not it here. Okay, now what am I actually looking for? It's a good question. Ooh, Tenon Piercing into Vine Grasp is nice. One of the reasons Vine Grasp is okay like this is because I can put a plus 10 on it from a shop and get it to 23, and that's okay. I do, and it's still zero cost, right? Which is a very nice kind of pickup. I'm a fan of that. I mean, I am just going to buy minus ones, right? It, it is just good to have the minus ones here. I'll toss a 10 into Vine Grasp here. I'm going to spin it and purchase another minus one. Oh man, that freestone is pretty good if I can connect that to Echo Infusion. I don't think I'm going to go too hard here. I am going to do a spell chain into the Steel Enhancer, though. It's a really good purple pickup, especially since I'm not doing an infusion right now. I'll do a Vine Grasp up to 23 here. And it gives me some good minus, some good... X5 targets and things. Let's just make fractures free. These are so strong. It's worth it. Purge a unit. Purge a spell. Purge a unit. I mean, purge the first of kin, right? This is actually pretty okay with me. Sure, this makes my draws actually way better into uh, Talos because I can focus things onto Thorned Hollow a little better. Eh, sure, why not? We'll take it. Cool. Talos, I think, should perish pretty confidently. Talos does not stand much chance against the Thorned Hollow lad, right? Cool, so the angle here is Chief, bottom, Steward in front, Fracture floor. Actually, it's Thorned Hollow upstairs, and then the Restore angle. That's just so much more correct. Yeah. Okay. 
big restore upstairs is value. Train steward downstairs. I do want to do the fracture in the back here. Good. Okay, she's riding it up, which means she goes upstairs here, which is a little scary. We still buff up here. It's correct to do it. I will double steel enhancer downstairs. I think that's good. And then I can fracture in the front here, which kills the back fella. And I take, let's see, it looks like two. Yeah, okay, good. It's a really good bounding echoes, whew, friends. You just do sting, sting, killing a whole bunch here. Top floor is cleared. We will fracture the boss. Big numbers, like it. Chief is going to die, but it's okay. That's that's his purpose, is to, to pass away. Train steward. Well, it saves his life, which is actually worth it. I am going to go upstairs. We're going to restore... I'm going to use the Echo Transfer on the Thorned Hollow. We're also going to toss him the Echo Infusion. I could just stop this incoming damage. It's actually much better to do that. And then work on the boss here. Yeah, cool. Yeah, things are going to die pretty hard to Thorned Hollow downstairs. He gets a bit out of control here. Reap the boss is good. You know what actually might also be really good? Just super reap the boss here is really strong, actually, yeah. Yeah, that punches so much damage. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, cool. Steel enhancers up top. Here's some echo transfer action, sure. Reap the boss, every little bit matters. Do as much damage as we can. Hey, we take these. It ain't pretty, but it gets there. Cool. Two damage taken is not that bad. Adaptive mutation is fun. Cycle of life compared to echo infusion is hilarious. I mean, shard channeler is fun, right? Shard channeler thorned hollow. problem is I don't love that. It's not terrible. I wish he just had his infusion, man. That's so rough. Because, like, what am I going to do? Spikes two to friendly units? It's so weird. Adaptive mutation? I don't think so. I guess skip this. The shard channeler is, like, almost good here, but he's just not there, right? He's not what I want. I have to take space here to jam this floor together. Well, an egg. There is an egg. Am I going to go bog deep cocoon? That's not the egg I wanted, monster train. That's not the egg I wanted. That's... I have another chance for an egg that I am going to, for the record. But bog deep cocoon is just... I just don't think he's the right egg for the job. Now, if I'm really feeling this, I could take the kin host carapace, but like there's a two in six chance I see what I want here. It's only one third. Kin host carapace is not terrible. I mean, there's for like an infusion into Thorned Hollow, I guess, is the thought. The, the main thing I'm struggling with here is what am I sticking in front of Chief? Because Chief can carry here. That is true. He can absolutely do it. But I need him to have something in front that... Something in front that actually does what we want. Yeah, I think that... This is maybe okay. I'd love to get the hollow in there, but unfortunately, it's too big. I think the safer pick is the Kinhos Carapace in case I get completely botched by everything else. We take the space here. We're experimenting. We're doing it. We're going left. Show me what I want, Monster Train. Show me the goods. Give me the egg. My god. They've done it. They've given me the egg of destiny. We have it. Well, if you're going to give me the choice, it's going to be the Bog Chrysalis. <laughs> Let me just be real with you. Reroll it. 
multi-strike into my bog crystal as well. Don't mind if I do. Okay, all right, you've got my attention, Mr. Kinhost Carapace infused into bog chrysalis, and now I just kind of hunt really hard for a an endless and try not to die in the process. So I think the care kind of hard solos this next combat as long as I don't go too ham. And I mean, I will buy this multi-strike. I've got hardened hull already, so that's killer. I'm looking for endless now. Cool, I'm all right with that. Let's chill a bit on the shard situation, I think. As much as I like spell chain fracture here, I think this is going to be fine. Let's move, okay. Well, we made some progress. It's something, we did it. Arc of invasion, I think we get through this, right? Yeah, okay, we can blast this. As long as I see literally anything purple, which is pretty likely. Yeah, cool. I can even do this. I think I am going to lean on Mr. Thorn Hollow here, which is pretty cool. I'm going to work. I'm going to try to overstack this floor on the bottom. So I'm looking for healing here. Well, he's dying, I guess. I have made a mistake. Monster Train, how could I? Yeah, he dies, of course, because that's how Spikes works here. So that's not good. Could be worse. Could be worse. Can he really solo this whole thing? That's a good question. Not sure. This might have been a throw. I don't know. That's nice. Just kill this big scary guy. And then I can also get the spikes guy down below. We'll do some stuff up here. I mean, I guess I'll try, right? Don't use the echo infusion here because I'm counterbalancing reap against the damage I'm doing. I take a hit. Not good, but... Pretty rough, admittedly. Pretty rough, I'll say. Sure, sure, sure. I'm okay with... Ooh, that's nice. 6 by 4 is 24. If I reap, he does 3. Is 3 by 9 enough? I think it is, actually. Mathematically, it is. Incredible, he did it. The math checks out. Okay, well, it's a pretty concerning looking top floor, I'll admit. I think what we do is we we do the thing on the bottom and then we just do the Haha, <laughs> I'm in danger moment upstairs, which is not ideal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm dead from this dude, right? 22, he takes, uh, he does a lot of damage. Okay, yeah, all right. Ugh, the challenges of... 200 shard runs. All right, let's go. I really hate the whole, like, mm, 75 shards in the ring five. Here's the thing. This, I actually think this stupid trial did me in here. Unbelievable, right? So here's the angle. I actually think we can do better if I do Chief Hollow. And we do Sting. And we do have to get rid of the Conduit. I think that's important. I think we can pull this off, right? Because there is a Sting coming up. Right? And then you have the Restore, Restore. Does he really still die? Dang. Ah, it's a shame. Should I not play him? I'm going to try this out for size. We'll see how it looks, but I do think that like this, I mean, losing him is going to, it's going to look exactly the same. Let's just do this the other way where I play the egg in back and we use that as kind of the hard carry here. So the idea then becomes I do 
I do this bounding echoes because it connects well. We do a chief up front. Yeah, the chief is good. I will. Thorned Hollow middle, I suppose, is fine. I do want to sting upstairs, so I kill the floor. And I think... I think the angle is I charge. I think I actually kill the 9-2 here and I let the floor stack up. It's a little weird, right? Like This is obviously a weird setup, but I need to get the egg down here. And he cruises in. He, he slambonies this floor big time. Now, I obviously am taking hits from this clip defender here, but it hatches this egg in the back in a way that I think actually, like, prevents me from hard dying overall, which I'll tell you I think is good. Yeah, I mean, like, that seems strong right there, yeah? And I can even save 30 HP here. And that's, I mean, I feel like we're in a much more commanding spot, even though I sacrificed a bit here. And this also gives me a, yeah, this gives me a target for my echo transfers that actually feels like it does something. Yeah. Yeah, this seems much better. And I will kill the clip defender in front here. Yeah, cool. I, f I feel a lot better about this overall. Now that I'm looking at it. Cool. Good good stuff. I'll stick the train steward down. He dies. It's fine. I'll even give this man 38 damage. It's fine. Let's see. 18, 30, 30, 75, 75. Does still get the kill. Yeah, cool. Alright, good job. Cool. Yeah, I feel okay about this now. Just take this scaling upstairs. We still have the kill down here. Yeah, okay, fine. I'm feeling pretty good about this now. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So you have to make that initial sacrifice, which is a really interesting realization, I believe. Just, like, really tricky, actually. And I think we do enough damage that I need to just drop Echo Transfer here. We're just going to hit this guy for 45. I guess I could stop the curse, actually. That's pretty fine. Yeah. I'll do that. And then, yeah, we're fine. Cool. So th this makes a lot of sense. This was obviously a better pick. Lean into the egg. Don't do stupid things. Cool. So I I got baited is the thing, and I couldn't play my egg. Interesting. I do think Broken Memories is pretty good here. It's purple. It brings back other things. That's cool. I like that. Edge Prior. <laughs> edge Prior makes... Thorn Hollow look better, but I think the answer is just focused growth here. Yeah, I think the answer is focused growth. We're looking for big healing, and this is big healing. Okay. Upgraded first of kin. Revenge plus one. If only I had had my kin host carapace when I gave this away, I would have had a uh, the crazy run. But alas, just hold on to it, bud. It's cool. Merchant of Steel, we're going for it. Yeah, I need to look. There's no stopping me here. Endless is found. All right, we got it. Cool. Good. Good, 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 good. Take the boons. Seems good. I'm going to take removals here. We're going to cut the train stewards. Yeah, they're hard to play. And I need to improve this deck's density because I took space first. I'll leave in one train steward for an eventual dummy kind of infusion. Because look, we're going to get, what, 15? It's 100. And then I have to do double infusions here, which is still possible. Interesting. Yeah, that's true. So coming up, we have magic shops, I think. I don't need to go to this this trinket shop. We'll see. It's going to depend on this, this here, this, what's it called? Battle in this trial. Spikes trial on sick offensive Seraph. Seems really bad. Yeah? Seems really bad. We're going to keep that off. If this were money, I might consider it, but otherwise, it's uh, pretty rough, I think. It's just Thorn Hollow middle. Maybe it does something. And then we, we chief. Honestly, we should like chief middle here, or chief bottom, I guess. Right? This is one of those moments where you're like, hmm, yeah, I don't really need. 
I don't actually really need anything else here. I don't need Chief that much if I'm playing effectively. Play Egg. He's gonna hatch and kill everything, and that's pretty cool. Meanwhile, Chief does a pretty good job of clearing most of this. See, this is what I mean, right? This is this is it right here. Drop egg. Go crazy. Like, yeah, that's that's big. And then we just come downstairs and he kills some stuff, and that's pretty cool. And yeah, that's reasonably very strong. I can do an extra that's what, like 20 damage to this guy? Plus the five times one, so it's extra 25. But I'm just gonna, I don't wanna hatch anyway, so we'll do this, yeah. That seems good. And then the egg goes upstairs and just kinda crunches. And we don't leak anymore. Yeah, I mean, this is the obvious pick, I think. Cool, he dies, good. We're gonna heal downstairs. Kills a man, good stuff. Easy, pop out eggs, great work. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what you're looking for, yeah? This is, this is as they say, it. Mid-floor looking pretty juicy here. But I am going to protect the chief, I believe. He deserves it. Take the draw two. I just load stuff up middle. It's fine. Cool. It's good. Pop out some guys. Play that bounding echoes. Drop another egg. Win on this floor. You know, the usual. The usual. Cool. That's also... A lot of reap damage that I'm doing here, too. Yeah, this just chews through this man. Cool. So, seems good. Seems good. Ancient Resonance is nice. I do like a card like that. And I'm going to a magic shop. So, even at minus one, minus one, that's just really nice. It's purple. It does some stuff that's nice. Ensnare is sick. Click Ensnare. Great news. I have to take this really bad first of kin. It's okay. He got they got rid of him for long enough, okay? We're going to go and remove him almost immediately here because I do think cutting down some of this trash is going to matter. Goodbye first of kin. Thanks for coming along, I guess. Lord Hollow could go here too, I think. Take the horde. I I mm, Forever Flame is nice. Forever Flame's really nice. He's free. That's really good. I'm going to take the Forever Flame here. That suddenly makes these units not so bad, actually. Now, I do need to be careful. Remember, shards matter. So I have to, I have two more rings. I have to do a lot of stuff here. So I have to do Thorned Hollow into a Train Steward. And I need to also do some other stuff here as well. Uh, and then a dupe of something meaningful. So, the dupe on the left there. Yes. I think I might need to draft another unit. It actually might have been a mistake to cut that first of kin, but the truth is that I actually think we're really in desperate waters if I have three banner units into this next combat. I don't think that's good. I'm going to do minus one, minus one focus growth here because I think that's good. I will 20 consume another restore. It just seems good. The double stack I don't feel like is is it here. We're going to re-roll this. Hold over. Okay. Hold over and snare is pretty sick. Although hold over steel enhancer is not as sick, but it's really good at hatching eggs. Hold over and snare just kind of kills enemies though. I think I'm going to grab that. We'll make focus growth free here. Another 20 consume. I don't feel like I want to burn all my cards, <laughs> right? I don't want to cut them all. Let's dumpster power of knowledge. It's not important, and I need my units for other stuff. I don't think I want to cut all of my restores. They are purple cards. We'll hold off. I'm going to move on. Only 100 shards right here. It's not as good as I would like. I need to... Hmm. Cool, so this is going to be fun. We just dropped this Bounding Echoes turn one. Chief comes down... I mean, I'm going to do Bogfly Friend immediately here. We're just going for purple, right? Doesn't matter. Pop out some dudes. Egg is good. Egg, good. I will play Thorned Hollow, I suppose. He's not 
terrible. He doesn't do nothing. Sure. I'll play another egg downstairs, though, because this is about to be sick, right? Just, like, look at these numbers. This is just ridiculous. Yeah, big number. Good. Cool. He's gonna hatch. That's very strong. We now start playing him middle. Just keep the eggs rolling, pretty much. Bottom floor is out of control. Yeah, cool. Just eggs. It didn't even apply any reap on that turn. It's like, oh no. What am I gonna do, right? I need to remove cards is what I need to do. That's a true statement. I need purples on middle, I think. We'll do some reap action here. I guess I should consider more echoes on middle. I may as well. I don't like this train steward. I hate having to hold on to units. This is a real, this is like the problem of needing to do unga infusions. I might just kill my own guys, right? To make space. It feels accurate. Like it feels really smart for me to do this. Play egg middle here and then just reap my own guy upstairs. I will actually do some reap downstairs to kill a guy. I think that's good. It's it's tough, right? Get some reap here. I like that. Play the egg upstairs. We'll do some real action up here. I'll self ping it. I'm gonna get some reap downstairs. I think that's good. Take a bounding echoes back. Cool. All right. I feel like our top floor wins very easily here. We're doing casual 800 damage to the boss immediately, which is fun. That's cool. Yeah, this, this seems reasonably strong when you put it in perspective, right? It's just a lot of damage upstairs. A lot of damage downstairs. I mean, we're doing... I think we kill on bottom floor at this stage, maybe? Oh, it's close. Oh, dang. Well, I'm gonna tell it like it is. I don't feel fear. I'm not feeling fear here. Right? It's fine. <laughs> oh no, my bottom floor did 600 damage. Oh dang. Cool, he's dead. It's a lot of damage, good grief. That's not even my strongest floor. Yeah, this... It gets out of control pretty quickly, it turns out. Pretty quickly, Unearthed Remains is a good card. It is purple whether you want it to be purple or not. Although, Wormkin Spike's probably better. I can play it at zero. Sure, sure. Note that I haven't seen the answer to Patient, but it kind of doesn't matter. Because really, all I need for Patient is to just play more eggs. <laughs> Which is satisfying, I'll say. Go to the magic shop, make stuff cheaper. I have to do a Dumbo infusion here. It's not great. I'm gonna do the Thorn Hollow into a train steward just so that I don't have to think about it. Plus 30. I will plus 30 the ancient resonance. Actually, that's a 10 in piercing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Good, good. I'll 10 in piercing the ancient resonance because it's my minus two target if I see it. Plus 30 is just gonna go into a restore here. Sure, why not? Okay, we did a Dumbo infusion. It's great news. Minor refraction? Major refraction. He's huge! That would be so bad. Okay, I think we just make Stew Tiny. Make make Big Stew Tiny. He's Tiny Stew now. Sure. Okay. Fair. We make the KR3. Yeah. You could have pivoted in Vector there. It doesn't matter. 20 consume. I don't care. I'm going to make fracture zero cost. I'm going to re-roll this, I believe. Yep. Oh no, I can't afford the holdover I don't want. Let's make the 30 cost restore free so that I can actually play it on every floor easily. And we chill. We chill. Sure, Armor Emblem seems reasonable here. 
Okay, so we're looking to do the same thing if I can get a reasonable hit of it, and I do believe that I can. So chief downstairs, bog friend, lock things down. I do some infusion nonsense here. We are going to lose our egg, but it doesn't matter at this point because he still respawns is the thing. It's what makes this so powerful. Is that tiny stew? It's not. It's a shame. Here comes the egg. Here comes the train steward. Here comes the sting. Here comes the restore. We can lock down most of this stuff without too much issue here, I believe. Just load it up. Cool. We're going to play the egg upstairs now. We're going to trail that guy. You're sure. Seems good. I mean, he actually dies if I just hit him with this ensnare, yeah? Yeah, true. So in that case, I can now comfortably egg downstairs to protect our friend. Give him the restore. Sting the middle floor. Good. This seems reasonable. Take the bounding echoes back. Okay, we're clearing everything. Even if they kill my egg, it's not that big of a deal. Right? It doesn't bother me that much. Like, oh no, my egg perishes. It's fine. Because the egg is still doing great work, despite that. We clear the whole floor here, yeah. The egg is still scaling, too, which is what really matters to me here, even if I'm not filling out the train. Yo, check it. Tiny Stew is here. He's doing it. All right, we finally hatched this absolutely ridiculous thing. We sandblast this floor and load it up. And I, do I kill Tiny Stew? Is it time for your rip, Tiny Stew? Yeah, all right, you lived and died immediately. It's okay. And then now you just do egg again, and it's... Everything is completely out of control here. There's really nothing to be afraid of. We just keep doing everything here. Cool. And then we win on bottom floor, right? Yeah, I mean, it's that's how this goes. I don't even have to think about it. I play this guy middle and he's outrageous and... Cool. Good chat. Well done. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the thing, right? Egg, egg nonsense. It's just too strong. Okay. Revenge, not bad. It's not bad. I don't mind revenge. I don't need this, though. I have other better choices, I think. Soul Siphon's pretty good. I could yeet that into another floor. I'll take the Soul Siphon. That's fine. Preserved Thorns. Draw me faster through. It's fine. Yeah, I'll grab it. I think I can connect a... Bounding echoes with it. Now I have to go to the dupe. I know what you're thinking. It's a little unfortunate that I have to do this. I was kind of hoping to not have to. I have to dupe the uninfused train steward here in order to do what I need to do. It's sad. I was hoping to draft a unit there, but we'll do it. I can still reach the 200. It just sucks to do it. Yeah, check it. All right. Intrinsic goes into something. Intrinsic Soul Siphon is a great start to this run. We'll just have happily drop that somewhere. And then Spell Chain is going to go somewhere as well. What is the Spell Chain pickup here? Something that I can play a bunch of times and is strong. Spell Chain and Snare seems kind of disgusting. I could lock two units down with Reap Chief. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. We hit 200 exactly. Let's go. Take some minus ones. I'm going to make Ancient Resonance cost one here since I didn't hit the minus two. The plus ten. I guess I'll toss it into a Restore. I would like Restore to actually do something. You might as well. Let's look at the Trinket Shop real fast. Gnarled Root. Rip. Notice Stone. No. Looks like we're carrying my train, my tiny stew and train big stew with me. Which is... Tragic. Karuska is outrageous here. Yeah. Courageous. Outrageous. That's nuts. You know why that's nuts? Look at my holdover echo transfer. This thing now generates echoes. Well, it, it it's a neutral. It doesn't cost anything, but it 
generates two infuse procs on chef's floor so that's kind of crazy hell's banners is proccing every turn yes that's true do i need the ember maybe probably not possibly it wouldn't hurt channel heart does make five stings do a lot of damage those are all pretty good as it turns out but i think the real answer here is what can i get and still afford a reroll nothing i don't think i'd buy one of those then i think the minus ones are honestly stronger well if i'm considering minus ones i should just get the hell's banners yeah just pick up hell's banners it's fine and i'll save my 60 gold i don't need to reroll for nothing cool we'll move on from here 200 out of 100. I think we straightforward get this. It's fine. I'm just going to throw exit patient and he's not going to be able to beat me. Even with his trample, like he can't. There's no chance that he can pull this off in any meaningful way. I will do stew middle, chief middle here. This buys a bait. Top floor, I will just fracture self, fracture self. Pop them out. Doesn't really matter which way he goes. Cool. Bounding Echoes time. This sucks, but it's going to be okay. I'm going to incant once just to kill that floor. We'll do egg upstairs. I am going to start loading this thing up here. Because it's good to do it. May as well toss some more reap out. Yeah, fine. Door. It's a lot of incoming damage. Chief is not going to be long for this world, but I can save him with the egg itself, which is kind of neat, I think. It is kind of neat. I can kill this floor and do some serious work here. Good, good, good. Top floor falls apart. I kind of don't care is the thing. Oh no, my unit died. Whatever, man. It's cool. We got it. I'm going to bring back Bounding Echoes here. Connect with some more units. Yeah, so he goes middle here, but he's going to punch some eggs, which kind of don't bother me. I can now... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We do a Preserved Thorns angle. Then we Bounding Echoes all of the Preserved Thorns. Chief is looking fine. Load up the upstairs here. Yeah, that's good. And then truly, I mean, you just we just sting like 50 times here and he do like 600 damage to the boss because that's a reasonable amount of damage. I will buff the egg, buff the egg, play Mr. Thorn Hollow. He tried his best. Let's do, I don't know, like 300 more damage to the boss. Seems good. That's a lot of reap damage. Chunk. Cool. Fine. Bounding Echoes. I'm going to save Chief's floor here. Good. Yep. Yep. It's solid. Take the Echo Transfer for energy. We'll Steel Enhancer here. Good. I can pull and kill the 20x3, which lets me hatch my egg. Very nice. And just load this sucker up, I think a lot of echoes I'm generating that pops out some very strong friends top floor meanwhile is now about to go absolutely ballistic which is a fun thing to say yeah that seems good focus growth on middle good job and then it's just what fracture the boss a whole bunch and we're gonna absolutely demolish here I think yeah true True, true, true. I am going to load up the upstairs because you might as well. And then here, yeah, 24 more reap. That's like an extra 300 damage or something. Cool. A ton of damage dealt to the boss there. He has to go middle now. Oh no, he didn't go middle. Monster train, how could you? Anyway, here's an egg. Here we go. Load it up. Let's go, friends. This egg is doing 5 million damage. We love to see it. 
Cool. Just load up with Reap, actually. Every single one of these things is an incredible amount of damage to the boss, in fact. And as it turns out, we actually kill him on this floor. <laughs> Pretty relentless patient. Yeah, seems good. That's mostly Chief. That's 1,092 Reap damage on that turn. That's mostly Chief, in case you forgot. Chief is also on this run, despite the fact that I have an absolutely disgusting endless egg setup. Whew. Well, this feels pretty good. We, we love a run that kind of just goes mad with power like this. I maybe record another one after this. Maybe. Interesting. That's not a very good bottom floor setup here. Not terrible. I do think it's correct to drop him in. And then just hit. Like, he kills the eggs, obviously. Oh no, my man takes some damage. It's fine. We're just going to lean in on this hard, right? How many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. So I want... If I play the bounding echoes there, I want to connect the bounding echoes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, okay, so here's the angle. You do preserved thorns downstairs. We come off floor for the resulting bounding echoes, which is a huge swing of hits. We drop in Big Stew or Spike's Stew. He's doing his best. He's doing his best work, okay? He, he's doing it. We plop down an egg here in front. Doing his best. We sting until this floor is dead. We then lock down middle here, which should absolutely crunch some stuff. We bring back the soul siphon, I believe. Actually, no, we bring back these other bounding echoes, truly. I then toss some stats into Monsieur Egg downstairs, reap the guy in the back here. We should crum crumble middle floor, I think with that ensnare trigger. Very good bounding echoes here. Like to see it. Egg, I think, continues to go on bottom floor. Seems reasonable. He's still perishing, which is kind of surprising. Uh, that looks a little better. I will ensnare upstairs. It's good. I'm going to ensnare middle floor. It kills him. Reap once upstairs. Good job store. I am going to work pretty hard at killing this floor. This is a scary floor, so we worm can spike it out. It's gone. We leave in this bounding echoes for fun times, and we finally start hatching the egg, which is very strong, as it turns out. Cool. So now I feel like we have an extremely dominant position for this. We kind of just lock down the mini boss, and it doesn't really matter what we do at this stage, right? We just full send on everything. You blast here, and then we kill this guy, and we hatch another egg. And then we just start elevatoring the egg in its easy mode, right? Sure. Here's Big Stew upstairs. He's doing his he's doing his best work. <laughs> he's he's trying here, okay? Get it, man? He's doing his best. His best ain't very good, but he's sure doing it. I'll give him that. It's very funny. It's okay. Once you hit the echo transfer, this kind of sails a bit. I can yank a lad and then stab a lad. It's pretty cool. And then, yeah, sure. We just blast bottom floor, which should kill everything. Cool. Goodbye, train stew. And yeah, I think we cruise on at this point. We just drop in egg after egg. And this gradually gets disgusting lock down some stuff. Now I do hatch the egg between combats, combat floors. This is important because it means that I don't actually, like the Ember Drain is not gonna hit me as hard. It still hit me pretty bad. Okay, I still have enough Ember to do okay here. Drop in another egg, we will just use the extracts to power it up. 
I'm gonna load up bottom here. We are definitely not gonna get a lot of kills here because two of them are dying outright, but that's okay. I mean, we're probably winning in like one, two turns here. Oh, we win now actually, which is great news, I suppose. Sure, the egg is too strong. We are too powerful, I believe is the terminology I like to use. We are actually just so strong that the bottom floor also dies here. Cool. Cool, that seems like a nice casual 1,040 reap damage here. I mean, this is one of the things about this clan combo, right? You just get an infused trigger and you go crazy. We, we win on middle, of course. They don't even get to see the bottom floor clear out, but they're very dead too. So that's cool. Hooray. Thanks, Hef. You did great. You gave me an item that I never used. Appreciate it. I would have actually used the blank pages if she had given it to me, but alas, she did not. It's okay. We had a good run. There was that reset I had to do on ring was it four. That's one of those things where I'm still learning the power thresholds of various builds at various points. That looked like it should have been an easier pickup, right? That looked to me like that should have been okay. We still ate it a bit, but I had to just wait for the egg at that point and not go too hard on the thorned hollow. So that's a little bit of a bait. That's something that it's tricky because, yeah, I don't even really have much else to add other than to say that there's just, you got, I got a little tripped up there. I think that we could have skated by and pulled it off if I had gone a different direction. Uh, on that first playthrough, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's 75 shards on that particular combat is way higher than I would normally ever go at 100, at 100 run, like a normal regular run, but okay. TIL, that's fine. Anyway, there's not much to add here. The perspective hardened hull is very strong. Even if, I, even if I had missed, I think we could have gotten away with this run and not been too out of place, but I did call the shot pretty hard. There was a one in three chance that we saw it at, at that one Wormkin banner, and we saw both of the eggs. So that's pretty good luck. That's a one in six followed by a one in five, which is nice and fun. Uh, do the math if you care. But that, that kind of, once you hit this unit in particular with Hardened Hull, there's just not much else to add. It's a W. So we did end up leaving in some train stewards because of some nonsense. I think what we did was correct with cutting the first of kin when we did. It accelerated our run quite a bit. I got rid of the thorned hollow by infusion. And then I did have to waste the dupe on ring eight just to hit 200 shards, but... I think it's fine. This is one of the reasons I actually really hate doing this. I think this is a very, a very stupid mechanic. It's one of the reasons I don't really think of, I don't really think I'll ever take 200 shard runs that seriously. The fact that you have to do this, this is just, it's very clear that they didn't make the game around this meta, but this is, I don't love that. That's, that's a feels bad moment. Uh, you're just basically taking shards to, take shards it's it sucks it's actually one of the reasons i do like the slay the spire approach i think that you just collect the three items and then you get it that's fine you take some penalties throughout the run to get them i obviously i know that like monster train devs really wanted to do something different they wanted to do something that was not akin to slay the spire and i think that's fair they were experimenting with some options i do think there's some benefits and downsides to this I like the fact that enemies get harder along the way. Uh, I think that's a nice mechanic. I don't like that it's like basically fully randomized. You walk into something like Harvesters of Death at 60 shards. You're not sure if that first wave is going to blast your face off or not, right? Like You're like, oh, did I get an upgraded uh, frontline and an upgraded backline with 160 HP? Sure, I'd love to take 80 pyre health and damage. Uh, it's just one of those things. I don't love it. I wish it were a little more... What's the word I'm looking for? Deterministic. I wish that it were easier to predict that. And there were, if there were any way of predicting that, the fact that there's a random element just makes it wild, right? Can't predict it at all. It's annoying. I also think that there should just be a threshold in the thing for like 100 shard meta or something, right? So that you cap at 100, no matter how many shards you take. Now, of course, that would mean that like, 
I don't know. They'd have to figure out some. Uh, they would change some stuff, but it's fine. I don't think they're ever going to change it at this point, and that's okay. I quite like Monster Train for what it is, but I do think that these little marginal changes, little slight differences could have made it a lot better, but it's all good. It's, it's obviously I'm still playing it, so heck yeah. Anyway, that does bring us up to 40 wins on the series, which is great news. So I will let you go there. So hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. Uh, as always, you can give the video a like or a dislike if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.